we are continuing our quest in evaluating integrals. Our next one will be doing some trigonometric substitution as we go through this. Um, before we do some trigonometric substitution, basically what we're going to be doing is taking a function and we're going to be um, inserting a trig function in place of it and actually that will make the problem easier even though it might not sound like it. Before we do that though, we need to get used to <clears throat> setting up the problem. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to set up triangles to prepare to evaluate an integral using tri trigonometric substitution. All right, what we are going to be doing in when we have trigonomet trigonometric substitution is our objective is going to be to eliminate the radical and the integrand. And what we're talking about with that, if I had something that looked like um, this and I wanted to take the integral of it, what we're going to try to do is get rid of this square root so that we can actually have something that maybe we can work with. All right, and to do that, we'll be setting up right triangles, and we'll use SOHCAHTOA to set up the equations. And if you remember, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and TO, this is spelled incorrectly, should be opposite over adjacent. All right, so these next six problems, they are all just practice setting up your triangles. All right, the first thing that we're going to do, and we are going to actually use, other than just SOHCAHTOA, um, we actually will be using a squared plus b squared equals c squared as well, because we're going to be setting up some right triangles. So the first thing that we want to do is to go ahead and draw a right triangle. And what we need to do is figure out um, what we are going to put on each side to get a squared plus b squared equals c squared to work with this type of problem. Okay, um, I am going to set up things in this triangle and then I'll explain why I put them there. I'm going to put a 9 right here, I'm going to put an x right here, and then I'm going to put the square root of 9 minus x squared right here. The reason that I did this was I kind of noticed because there's a subtraction sign here, if I were to solve this for one of the sides, so if, if I made this b squared equals c squared minus a squared, and then I solved for b, this would be the square root of c squared minus a squared. So because the form my answer was in, I noticed that this would be, the square root is going to be one of the legs, and then this first number is going to be my hypotenuse, and the second number is going to be the other leg. Okay, we will get into the habit just because I think it will make our life a little bit easier to go ahead. We'll put the x value right here, and then we'll put, if there's another more complicated x value, we'll put it down below. So now that we've done that, we're actually going to um, write some things down. The first thing that we would like to do, we would like to get an actual value for x. In order to do that, notice if I'm dealing with this angle right here, I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse, so I'm going to do the sine. So the sine of theta is going to equal x over, actually this is not going to be 9, it's going to be 3, because that was c squared. So c would just be 3, so x over 3. And then when we do this, I'm going to, remember I said we would like to solve for x, so I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to get x equals 3 sine theta. Okay. The next thing that we are going to need to do is find dx. And the reason that we're just finding all this is because then there's going to be some things that we'll be able to substitute when we're done. All right, so the derivative of 3 sine theta would be 3 cosine theta d theta. And then the next thing that I would like to be able to do is actually to solve for the square root. So if I'm solving for the square root and I'm dealing with this angle, I would have adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to have cosine, so I'm going to have the cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then once again, I'd just like to solve for that square root. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I'll get the square root of 9 minus x squared is equal to 3 cosine theta. So really, that's all we're going to do when we set up the problem. Once we do that, then we'll actually be able to go into the integral problem and do some substitutions. All right, let's try another one. This one time, notice that we have the square root of x squared minus 9. So once again, we're going to draw our triangle. All right, and I notice that we're given a square root and there's a subtraction sign again, so I do know again that that's going to be one of my legs. And then I know that this is going to be my hypotenuse, so my x squared is just going to be x, and then this is going to be one of my other legs, which will be 3. Um, please notice where I put the 3 this time. Um, it doesn't really matter where you put these as legs. I usually like to have a variable over on the um, vertical leg, but 
um, again, you'll, you'll get a little bit different answer, but it would be equivalent to mine. But we'll just try to get into the habit of all setting up the triangle the same way. Okay, first thing that we would like to do is solve for x. So um, to solve for x, I notice that I have um, adjacent and hypotenuse, which would be cosine. But to make my life easier, um, I'm going to, instead of doing adjacent over hypotenuse, I'm going to do a hypotenuse over adjacent. And um, if cosine is, if you remember, 1 over the cosine is equal to secant. So secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other. So I'm going to put the secant of theta will equal x over 3. Hopefully that made sense to you. Um, and then we're going to solve for x. So I'll cross multiply, I'll get x equals 3 secant theta. What that saved me from doing was having, I'd end up with 1 over cosine, which I would have had to convert to secant anyway. All right, and then we also want to find dx, so the derivative of 3 secant theta will be 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. So we found two things. Our last thing is we would like to solve for the square root. So notice with the square root I'm given opposite and adjacent, which would be tangent. So I'm going to have the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the, adjacent, over the adjacent. And then again, we would like to solve for the square root, so I'll cross multiply, and I'll get the square root of x squared minus 9 is equal to 3 tangent theta. So I found the three things that I needed to. I would be ready to start my problem. All right, let's try one more with me, and then I'm going to have you do some without me. All right, this one, once again, because <clears throat> we do have a square root, I know that I'm going to be set to go theta in there. And this time, since there's a plus sign, if I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, notice if I square rooted both sides, that would solve for c, that would solve for the hypotenuse. So this is actually going to be the hypotenuse this time, which means these other two are the legs. Um, please remember, again, I like to have a variable on my vertical leg, so this would be x and 3. So once I have that, I'm ready to set up my triangle. First thing that I would like to do is solve for x. That's going to be opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be tangent. So I'll have tangent of theta equals x over 3. And once again, if I cross multiply, I'll get x equals 3 tangent theta. I next would like to find dx, so the derivative of 3 tangent theta is 3 secant squared theta d theta. And then the third thing that I always like to do is solve for the square root. And once again, <clears throat> I do notice if I'll use the 3, that would involve the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So instead of doing cosine, I'll do secant to do hypotenuse over adjacent instead. So secant theta is equal to the square root of x squared plus 9 over 3. Then I can cross multiply and I'll get the square root of x squared plus 9 is equal to 3 secant theta. All right, I have three examples to go. What I'd like you to do is work through each example, and then you'll come back to the video and see how you did on it, see if you can set them up on your own. All right, so hopefully you were on your own, and now you're coming back to check it. Um, on this specific problem, I know because there's a plus sign, that square root is going to be my hypotenuse. And then the these would be my legs, so the first leg is going to be the square root of 3x, and the second leg is going to be 2 and then I'm ready to set up my triangle. When I'm solving for x, I'll do opposite over adjacent, so this is going to be tangent, so tangent theta equals square root of 3, x over 2, and then I'll just cross multiply. I'll get the square root of 3x is equal to 2 tangent theta, and then if I have to solve for x, I'll divide by the square root of 3, so I'll have x equals 2 over the square root of 3 tangent theta, and we won't worry about um, anything being in the denominator, that will be okay. and um, then from here, we could actually find dx, and um, we'll have 2 over square root of 3 secant squared theta, d theta, and then solving for the square root, <coughs> we'll have hypotenuse, or excuse me, hypotenuse over adjacent, which once again is secant, so we'll get secant theta equals the square root of 3x squared plus 4 over 2 cross multiply, I'll get the square root of 3x squared plus 4 is equal to 2 secant theta. All right, in example 5 and 6, I'm just going to have you set up the triangle. So just set up the triangle because I think we've done enough practice with actually um, finding x and dx and all that good stuff. All right, so problem 5, um, just take pause the video, see if you can set up the triangle all by yourself, and then come back. All right. 
So if we've got theta, I notice because this is a minus sign, this is going to be one of the legs. And then um, the square root of 3x is going to be the hypotenuse. Um, four is going to be, uh, 2 is going to be my other leg. And then this will be 3x squared minus 4. And again, it doesn't really matter which one legs I go, but again, I do like a variable on my vertical leg. And then problem 6, um, once again, just setting up that triangle. Go ahead and pause me and see if you can get it set up right and then come back and check yourself. Because there's a minus sign, I know that this is going to be one of the legs. The hypotenuse will be 2. The other leg will be square root of 3x. And then this will be my third leg. And again, it's just preference with how I like um, setting it up. But if you set it up the same way as me, then you'll always get the same answer as me on all the problems. So hopefully now you can set up a triangle, getting yourself ready to do a trig trigonometric substitution.